Hi, I'm Dave from BoyInABand.com, and welcome to day two of the seven day song on Dark Step Drum and Bass. Yesterday, I taught you how to make a sweet breakbeat for the start of our track. Today, I'll be teaching you how to make a disgusting neurofunk bass to accompany said beat, another bass to add some variety, a simple sub bass, and also how to apply a useful technique called side chaining to the bass so the low end of the mix doesn't get too messy. Okay, let's start with the disgusting bass. I warn you now, it took me a lot of playing to come up with this patch, and it involves loads of devices, but if you like basses that are audibly reminiscent of trying to fit a bulldozer inside a cat, then stick it out to the end, since each stage makes a huge amount of difference to the sound. By the way, my apologies in advance, I don't usually big up my own synths much, but this one is freaking awesome, so I'm probably going to don the ego I usually reserve for writing rap lyrics during this tutorial. So we'll start by making a combinator called Blur, that's B-L-E-U-R-G-H, Blur, and this describes what happens to the listeners of the patch. Inside it, we'll create a line mixer 6 to 2, and then an instance of our trusty friend, Thor Polysonic Synthesizer. Initialize it, and open it up with Show Programmer. I'll just put in some notes now. I'll talk a bit more about these later. Okay, so I've put in some notes to work with there. Back in Thor, Turn it to mono legato, so only one note can play at a time, and turn the sustain on the amp envelope to full so it doesn't lose any volume over time. Of the top here, turn the portamento to on, and yeah, leave it around 40. Now if we take a listen to the bass soloed out. This bass is a sluggish and ugly beast, but it will be seriously powerful. Kind of like an end of the level boss on a House of the Dead game. Now. Make two analog oscillators, so we've got one in there already, second one, and a multi-oscillator. Take them all down two octaves, since this is a bass patch. Leave the first analog oscillator on sawtooth for the punchy grit of the sound, but the second one change it to a pulse wave, making a slightly hollower tone to accompany the gritty saw. So let's hear those two together. Sweet. Lastly, set the multi-oscillator to square wave, interval detune mode, since this mode keeps the note of the bass more noticeable, even when considerably detuned, and then turn the detune amount to about 50. This will be the wide, thick part of the tone, so let's run that through as well. You can hear it's thickened it up. Next, run them all through into that filter, as I've done there. This filter is going to remove some high end and focus the sound a bit more. So turn the ENV to zero, so the filter envelope down here doesn't affect it at all, and turn the frequency up to 7 kilohertz. Yeah, that'll do, around there. Just to cut off the fizzy high end, but leave enough top so it's got something to distort later. Next up it goes into the shaper, so let's turn that on, and scroll down to wrap mode. Now, turn the drive up to about 51, to really push it. And this has this dirty distortion to it, so that's the first kind of distortion we'll be adding. Next, run it into filter 3, which we're going to change into a state variable filter. Turn it to notch mode, and turn the ENV to zero again. Notch mode cuts a small band of frequencies, and as you move the frequency knob, you can hear that cool effect coming through. We'll be modulating this with an LFO in a second. Now, leave the frequency at about 100 Hz. Let's get to the modulation bus routing. Now we're going to do three things in here. Modulate filter 3 frequency, like I just said. Modulate filter 1 frequency to bring the high end in and out. And then modulate the multi-oscillator detune amount, just to make it into a noisy mess on a regular basis, which is, I'm assuming, what you're here for. So let's start with that noisy mess. Turn LFO1 to tempo sync mode, so it's in time with the song. Turn the rate to, yep, leave it at 2 to 4. So it's kind of a frequent modulation. And then in the MBR, modulation bus routing section, route the source LFO1 to the destination oscillator 3, detune amount. Let's take that up to amount of about 60. You can hear that coming in and out there if we solo it out. <laughs> it really is just a noisy mess. Brilliant. Nice and uh, nasty. Now to modulate those other filters. Set LFO2 up, much the same, tempo sync, but this time take the rate up to 4-4, four, four, and then route LFO2 to the filter 1 frequency, and filter 3 frequency. 
by 80 and minus 50, respectively. So listen to the sound modulating now. Much more interesting to listen to. But now we're going to dirty it up a bit. So right click and create a Scream 4 distortion unit. Just use the default settings with a tiny bit less damage control and a tiny bit less mid. And let's take a listen. Without and with. It turns it from a dirty little synth into a distorted machine of death. At least I like to think so. However, if you listen, there's a large amount of fizziness added to the tone as a result. So let's notch it out with an EQ. So right click, create M class equalizer. Remember the technique from day one? Find the band of frequencies with a really narrow band there and remove it completely. Yeah, it's around there, 2.8 in this case. So if we completely remove that. Now we're going to do something that guitarists might be familiar with if they've recorded much. Double tracking. Well, we can't really do authentic double tracking, but we're going to copy the three devices we've just made, change them slightly, then run them into another channel on this mixer here. We're then going to pan them slightly left and right to widen the sound a bit. The minute differences are the important bit, as these will give the sound more stereo space. We'll monoify the low end later, but this will make the high end much wider and more interesting. So, I'm going to duplicate all these devices in high speed now. Then link them up then put it back into this mixer here. So let's pan them now before we forget. One to the right a little bit, and one to the left a little bit. On the clone instance, we're going to abide by the law of opposites. So open the programmer again on Thor, if you've closed it, and take the oscillator 3D tune amount down to minus 50. The filter 1 frequency down to minus 40, and the filter 3 frequency up to 85, or around that. This will make the sound move between the two speakers as it modulates. Since it's not exactly opposite to the first instance of Thor though, it'll be more interesting and a bit dirtier to listen to. We're also going to go down to the Scream 4 unit and take the P1 down a little bit, just to change the tone slightly. Okay, now there's quite a lot to do to turn this into the hulking monolith it has the potential to be. So I'll move fast, but I'll try to explain what I'm doing as I go. Let's unsolo that and root the mixer into an EQ. Hit tab to look at it, let's remove it from the send return and move it above. Then take the output here into the input of the EQ and the audio output into the from devices on the combinator and that's linked up nicely. With this EQ we're going to remove the mid-range around 500 Hz, so param1 on, frequency to 500 Hz by 13 decibels, quite a lot, with a Q of 3.3, nice and wide, to get rid of the mud that's sitting there and taking the focus away from our beautiful bass. We're also going to notch out some of the fizz and the same technique that we've been using so far, and I think it's around 10 kilohertz. If I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. Let's just completely remove that. So, without the EQ, and with the EQ, much more focused. Next, make another EQ, and move it above the existing one, so the signal chain is obvious. And we're going to add a bit more crunch to the tone by removing 1.5 kilohertz by about minus 16 decibels and boosting slightly higher, 2 kilohertz, by about 10 decibels, at a wider 1.7 Q. So let's take a listen without, and with. Much crunchier. This focuses the tone around 2 kilohertz, where the distortion is particularly crunchy. Next, let's really unleash this monster. Right click and create another Scream 4 unit, move it up, and turn it to Scream mode. Damage control 35, P1 full, and P2 quarter. Turn off the cut, and turn the body type to E, which is a nice powerful cab simulation. Then turn resonance to 45, and auto to full. Auto determines whether the size of the simulated cabinet changes depending on how loud it is. So imagine a speaker that grows in size when the bass grows in volume. A cool mental image to accompany a cool sound. Now add two stereo images. The first one, take the crossover to 400 Hz and take the low band to mono to tighten up that low end nicely. Let's take a listen so far to have a listen to Scream 4 and the stereo images. 
So without the Scream 4, and with it. Much dirtier, eh? On the second one, turn the crossover to fully anti-clockwise, 100Hz, and then solo high band. This will cut off everything below 100Hz and leave plenty of room in the mix for the sub bass later. Now this is going to be the tone shaper that will make it sound more professional. Right click and create a BV512 digital vocoder. And let's move that up. Now turn it to EQ mode, equalize mode, and I'm just going to draw in a wave now. So you can see it starts high up the bottom there, and then goes down and back up and down right at the end. So let's take a listen without. And with. Hear the difference that makes to the tone? Sweet, huh? Lastly, run the whole thing through a compressor with lowest attack, minus 32 threshold, and just over 4 to 1 ratio. This won't sound like it's doing much yet, but wait till part 3 to see what this is for. And there! That's the disgusting dark step bass. Quite complicated, but just have a play with those settings I adjusted earlier, and you'll be able to modify this monster into something you're really happy with. Before we move on to the next bass, I'll have a quick chat at you about the notes. The riff starts off the root note of F sharp, it starts here on the E. This immediately throws the listener, and adds to the unusual syncopation, since they expect it to land on the root note at the start of the bar. As with a lot of dark step, it revolves around the minor key and is making use of semitones. This F sharp to G section comes up three times here in the riff, and at the end of the loop, this little fill uses a chromatic technique just going down the notes with no regard for harmony or consonants whatsoever. What a rebel. It's also going up to the high notes quite often to make use of that portamento. In technical music theory terms, the high notes make it sound frickin' cool as hell. They're just going up to the octave above what it's already playing. So it's very simple, but it's nice and catchy as a result. Another thing to note, the notes are always playing and quite long. The dark step doesn't tend to have a fiddly complex bass line too often with regards to notes. The complex part comes in with the filter modulation. I'll be discussing this later on in the 7 day song. Phew, that was a mission and a half. Let's take a quick breather, then join me in part 2 where I'll be going over a much simpler but still seriously cool resonant bass synth patch. <laughs> 